Hi students, welcome back to another lecture. Um, this week is gonna be fairly quick. I'm just gonna walk you through an example of a solution component in a student's essay that did a really great job um, composing their solution. Um, next week, you are going to be submitting your conclusion. So really and truly, you will be submitting your entire essay, your introduction, your problem section, your solution component, as well as your conclusion and work cited page. And we're gonna be engaging in what we call peer review, where one of your course mates is gonna be looking over your work, offering you some really great feedback, um, I will be looking at your conclusions. I will not be looking at the whole essay because up until this point, I've already been giving you feedback on the various components and part of the essay. And then you should be ready for submission after that. So hopefully this process will give you some really great insight and feedback and some concepts to review um, before you turn in that final major project. So I'm gonna share my screen to this essay. And again, this was a student that did really well on this solution component. And I just thought it would be um, a good experience for you to be able to read and see what they did right. And for us to talk through some of these concepts. So this student's essay was over climate change and they addressed the problem of climate change and had a couple different solutions uh, to combat the system as a whole. Combating climate change requires collaboration between nations and individuals alike since climate change impacts everyone on the earth. That is their topic sentence that I highlighted. While eliminating the threat of climate change is not possible, many actions, plans, laws, and nature preservation can significantly low the, lower the rate of climate change. One way a single person can alleviate climate change is by reducing one's carbon footprint. One of the things that I want you to know is this really seamless transition. The student went from talking about the problem to very seamlessly, almost to where we didn't even notice that they were going into the solution component. That's what happens when you construct a really well done transition. You move into another part of the paper really without your reader even realizing what you're doing. A carbon footprint is how much a, per, a single person emits. And a majority of the carbon emissions stem from eating and food waste. And we see that that is a, um, a secondary source that's being used. In the United States alone, studies reported that decomposed food waste found in wastelands account for a global 34% of human emitted methane, a greenhouse gas. Not only is methane a more potent greenhouse gas, but the amount of food wasted heavily contributes to climate change. Guys, again, what I want you to see here, they use secondary sources to support their ideas, but then after those secondary sources, they give this really great explanation of how that ties back into the topic. Most of the foods that produce the most emissions are meats and daily products since domesticated animals release methane. The animals that are also grown and cultivated, which requires a large field of pasturage. An easy way to reduce one's carbon footprint is by eating fewer meats and dairy, buying local products and produce and grain crops. Grain crops is an excellent alternative to environmentally friendly and environmentally friendlier than producing produce at a grocery store because studies estimated that a quarter of the fresh water used in irrigation is lost to unconsumed crops. Most homegrown crops do not require much water for irrigation. Fresh water is essential for every plant and animal survival, but the amount of fresh water lost in irrigation dries the limited fresh water reserves on earth. Again, we see them propose this solution back up that solution with secondary research and then explain how that research ties into their ideas. Another way to diminish one's carbon footprint is by using public transportation. Again, we see a new idea here, electric cars or walking, biking. A vast majority of individuals commute to work by themselves, which raises countless red flags for climate change. According to a Census Bureau in 2013, around 86% of people drove to work, and of those 86%, 76% drove alone, secondary research. Most modern-day passengers 
cars produce 4.6 metric tons yearly. And since most individuals drive alone, their carbon footprints skyrocket due to the vehicular commutes. Secondary research. Utilizing public transportation is an excellent alternative to personal commutes because they can effectively and resourcefully transport many people in one vehicle. Again, this is a direct explanation of that secondary research. Carpooling is also better than driving alone because not as many cars are required for transportation. Electric vehicles are a viable option as well because they do not produce as much carbon emissions when compared to their counterparts. Electric cars are fueled entirely by electricity and with electric vehicles becoming a staple in the automotive industry, more locations offering charging stations to power the cars. Most electric cars do not produce any tailpipe emissions when driven, but they are not entirely eco-friendly due to their reliance on charging stations. The charging stations require an external power supply to produce electricity, but some charging stations use renewable energy to make power, which significantly reduces carbon dioxide emissions. Alleviating climate change needs collaboration between people, and while it may be implausible to eliminate carbon emissions from day-to-day -day activities, many modifications from eating habits, <clears throat> commuting, and waste reduction can greatly mitigate an individual's carbon emission. Guys, what we see here is just this really careful balance of the student showing their ideas, using secondary research to support those ideas, commenting on that research and showing how it ties into this grander topic. And then here at the end, we have this really great sentence, alleviating climate change needs collaboration between people. And while it may be implausible to eliminate carbon emissions from day-to-day -day activities, many modifications to eating habits, commuting, and waste reduction can greatly mitigate an individual's carbon emission. One of the things that we talk about in this week's lecture is this idea of creating a plausible solution that's reasonable, that makes sense. This student has taken very basic fundamentals of day-to-day -day operations and they've created a plan that's reasonable and that makes sense while still proving that it can have a great effect on this problem. Renewable energy is a source of power that can easily replenish and creates continuous energy, which is why many locations are utilizing renewable resources. This is a new topic that the student is introducing for the solution component. Renewable energy comes in various forms ranging from solar to geothermal. The most used renewable energy, hydroelectric, is highly effective at generating energy because once a dam is built, Water always flows through creating electricity. Solar energy is another highly used and low costing renewable resource because the sun is continuously beating energy towards earth providing power throughout the day. And we see that there's a secondary uh, research component that's used there. Solar energy does have a disadvantage, however, Solar panels cannot produce energy at night. Renewable energy is still improving and evolving as technology improves, but there are plenty of advantages to, to renewable when compared to non-renewable sources. One massive benefit of renewable energy is renewability. Renewable energy can always be restored, but fossil fuels cannot. Once earth is out of natural resources like fossil fuels, no more can be produced. Renewable can also produce minuscule amounts of carbon dioxide. According to a case study conducted in the United States during 2015, the United States experienced a decrease in CO2 emissions, and it was primarily due to the increase in renewable energy consumptions. Using renewable energy has apparent decrease in carbon emission, but it cannot replace the energy produced from non-renewable energy currently. As mentioned previously, renewable energy can still be improved upon and as technology advances, so will the efficiency and productivity of the energy source. One thing I want you to note that this student does really well is as the reader is reading through the solution, they may come up with questions like, well, renewable energy sources just aren't there yet. We just don't have the technology. What this student has done in this paragraph is he has already acknowledged some of those concerns and brought those to light to combat the questions that the reader may be having as they're navigating through the essay. 
And then again, we have this really carefully crafted summative sentence. Renewable energy may fall behind non-renewable energy currently, but as technology improves, the potential renewable energy can drastically help combat climate change. I hope reading through this example was really helpful, especially in considering what creates a good solution in terms of paragraph formation, uh, whether or not it's a reasonable idea, and as far as just expansion of all the different concepts that you can cover. This student specifically focused on two different areas. What can people do about this problem and what can we do as far as uh, renewable energy sources, as far as that is concerned. It's all about how you organize and construct those paragraphs uh, to ensure that you're creating an organized and cohesive solution section. I look forward to reading your work and I hope you have a great week. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns.